Happy Independence Day. It's July 4th here at the West End Gun Club. Came out to the range on Saturday morning to shoot some more 22. I'm gonna run through the July course of fire, at least four of the stages. Probably won't do the rooftop stage because I don't have a rooftop yet. I was gonna go actually check to see if we have one sitting out there that I can actually use, but it might be actually too big for me to carry or lug down this kind of hillside here, but we'll see. Um, but I also came out to the range on Saturday morning because I was cleaning out my garage yesterday and I've had some shooting related accessories that I was gonna chuck in the garbage, but I mean, it's all still good. It's just not worth selling online because it costs more to ship it than it is worth like, than the value is to get, you know, what people pay for it. So I figure I'll just uh, bring it out to the range and just throw it on a bench on the main line and let people take it if they want it. So I put a sign that says free, just some random stuff, go ahead and take it, um, whatever, right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just start setting up and then I'm gonna go to Connex container, grab a lot of the, uh, the target stands that I need and then um, grab my notes, we'll start, or my, my uh, course of fire printed out, we'll start taking some notes and then I'll go check on that rooftop stage, or rooftop um, uh, prop. We'll see if that's usable or if it's still sitting up there and then we'll start some shooting. Spent nearly an hour and a half getting everything set up as far as all the stages and all the uh, targets or whatever. As I mentioned in prior vlogs, I spend a lot of time uh, in pre-prep so I can get all the stages laid out correctly and then I'm gonna go out there. Sp I spray paint the ground. Um, hope it usually holds up good enough for about three weeks on the dirt. Uh, so I know where to place the targets. So it's like quick and easy when I uh, match day or match morning, I just go out there and just start throwing targets out where they're supposed to be at. Um, but so far, I, I think I've verified that all the targets are visible from the points uh, firing positions. So uh, we'll run through those stages, uh, except the rooftop. I went up there to look at the rooftop and it's, it's really big and it's kind of rickety and there's no way I can get it down here by myself. So uh, I'm going to shoot the rooftop stage, um, at least from the prone positions, because that's the lowest position for that stage. So I, I want to make sure that I can see the targets from the lowest position. But uh, that's why I set that up. First stage we're gonna run through is called speed counts and fireworks in 22 matches. This is the bonus time stage. So the, the time does matter in terms of uh, tiebreakers. It's gonna be 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We got two targets, a one inch at 50 and a two inch at 100. You're gonna get 10 points per hit and then uh, one tenth of a point per second remaining. So if you have 10 seconds remaining, you get one full point of bonus points. So it's possible to get more than 100 points on this stage. Uh, we got two firing points. You're gonna move from two positions. They're, it's 10 feet uh, apart, so I marked them with orange markers and I tape measured it. Uh, we're looking at on starts. Sorry, there's a lot of bugs out here. West End Gun Club in the summertime, bugs come out full force. So standing, rifle in hand, mag in, action open. On start signal, shooter will assume a prone supported position from position one, which is the left one, and then the second position is the right one. So from position one, engage each target with one shot in the following order. 50 yard, 100, 50 yard, hit or miss, move on. So it's just shoot and move. So 50, 150, then move to position two. You're gonna do 100, 50, 150, one shot. Uh, it doesn't matter if you hit or miss, move on. And then come back to position one and you're gonna do 50, 150. So basically uh, near, far, near, three shots, far, near, far, near, four shots, then back here, uh, near, far, near, uh, three shots total. And that should be pretty straightforward. It's all prone supported, so nothing else, uh, nothing important there. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my timer on this position so I don't have to carry it with me. Since I'm gonna finish on this position, that'll let me have the, uh, get my last shot correctly if I was gonna time myself.
all rounds complete time 83.76 so i end up not adjusting parallax and i end up not adjusting for elevation i was holding over which should work out for me um i actually think i was hitting a little bit low on my holdovers but i'll probably just do that for this match uh, when i when i actually shoot the match uh it saves you a lot of time of adjusting your knobs but some will argue that you should probably adjust your parallax because it could be bad um, in terms of uh, parallax being so off that you might actually miss. But I think it's doable. A one inch at fifty, you can probably just cut the cut the difference and maybe maybe uh, set your parallax a little bit under a hundred, and you should be able to run that. Uh, do what works for you. But I just ran it without adjusting my knobs, and I could have run this a little bit faster. I think uh, probably my transitions, plus I, I wasted a couple of seconds trying to set this timer down, but 83.76, I'll write that down. 10 hits, no misses. The next stage of fire we're gonna run through is called One Chance to Get It Right for the Big Fireworks Show. 120 second part time, 10 rounds total. We have five targets, but only two distances. We have four at a 50, it's a one, one and a half, two and two and a half, and we have a three inch at 100. You're going to start standing, rifle in hand, mag in action open, on start signal, shooter will assume, assume a prone supported position and engage the 50 yard targets from large to small, hit to move on. Once you engage all four, once you hit all four targets, you will engage a 100 yard target without dialing any elevation or windage, shooter may adjust parallax. Um, shooter will then resume engaging the small, sorry, the 50 yard targets from small to large, so reverse order. First large to small, 100, then small to large, hit to move on. Uh, assuming you you make all your hits you can then engage a hundred yard target with your tenth round um, you must engage a hundred yard target without dialing so it's all hit to advance no elevation or windage change allowed so once you get everything set you can allow you're allowed to touch parallax that's it pretty straightforward let's go and run through it Pretty easy, all 10 hits. Uh, for those wondering, my my uh, parallax knob is actually in the top because it's a collis, so for anyone freaks out saying I adjust my elevation, it's just my parallax wheel. Uh, pretty easy to do, just gotta remember to engage small to large, 100 than small, than, uh, sorry, large to small at 100. <laughs> sorry, you gotta remember to engage large to small 50 then go to 100 and then small to large at 50 and then go back to 100 so once you do, once you get all that you should be good to go um, hopefully you can you can hold over if you got a reticle that's capable of holding over if not you'll definitely need one for nrl 22. all right it says i only needed 57.9 seconds for this okay pretty easy stage the next stage we're running through is called Take a Stand for America's Birthday, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. Got two targets, two distances. We got a two and a half at 38, five inch at 78 yards. Sling only allowed. You're gonna start standing rifle in hand, mag in action open. On start signal, shooter will take a kneeling position and engage the 78 yard target with three shots. Uh, it doesn't say where to kneel, but I guess anywhere around the chair should be fine. Shooter will then sit on the chair with their back against the back support, engage the 38 yard target with four shots. So you're gonna sit on the chair and engage with four shots. Shooter may bring their knee up to support the rifle, but the rifle may not be supported by the chair. 
Chair will face downrange, which it is. Shooter will then move to a standing position and engage the far target with three shots. So three at 78, four from the chair at, at uh, 38, and three again at 78, but standing. So kneeling, sitting, standing. Pretty straightforward. All right, a rifle in hand, mag in action open. Start the clock. I'm gonna get into a kneeling position. If I don't hit, shoot the uh, pull here. Okay, my back is to the chair. Miss, I don't think you, I guess you could theoretically do this. I guess you theoretically can do this. Miss again. It's because I'd, Am I holding low or? Finally. So I got three misses, short range. Now I'm gonna shoot standing, which isn't a big deal. Miss, four, negative four. Negative five. Negative six. I snapped that one up badly. So miss only got, I missed six, which is really bad. Um, definitely probably want to run through this one more time, but we'll go ahead and just score it honestly. See, I hit four. So I only got 40 on the stage. But I'm going to shoot this one more time. Definitely need to get a feel for this stage. Ended up missing five that round. Definitely the sling will help you in certain areas, but uh, I think you'll definitely need it for kneeling. That chair thing, I'm not entirely sure. You can game the system here. I'm not sure if bringing your knee will help you, especially for people who don't, aren't that flexible. I think what you'll need to do is probably uh, figure out how to jam your hand into the sling to get you more tension in this position. What I was doing is basically using my elbow or using the uh, back rest because my back is still on the back support making contact but I was basically trying to get my arm on here on this position to kind of steady this but the key thing is trying to get all this balanced so trying to figure that out this should help you out but it's going to hurt quite a bit on your wrist depending on how you have your balance points so 
I would definitely try to practice this at home, figure out what you want to do as far as sitting in a chair and how you're going to hold this, hold this uh, gun up on a target. It's definitely an awkward position, I'll tell you right now. Next stage of fire we're going to run through is called Freedom Doesn't Knock, It Rings. 120 second part time, 10 rounds. Shooting off a ladder. Got three banks of targets. We got the quarter inch and half inch KYL at 30 yards. We got the three quarter and one inch KYL at 60 yards. And we got a three inch at 90 yards. Three inch target. So one piece of equipment allowed. I'm going to use my, my uh, rail changer plate rail changer bag rather, from area 419. We're gonna start standing rifle in hand, mag in action open. On start signal, shooter will build a position at the lowest ladder step available, and then engage the KYL with two shots each, alternating. So you're gonna shoot, wait, what? Shooter will engage the 30 yard KYL with two shots, each by alternating targets. So quarter inch, half inch, quarter inch, half inch. That's the order they set. Then, so that's four total. Then your shooter will move to the next ladder up, next ladder step up, then engage the KYL at 60 with two shots each, alternating targets, three quarter, one inch, three quarter, one inch. Shooter will then move to the next ladder step and engage the 90 yard target with two shots. All shots are hit or miss to move and move on. So it's just shoot and move, shoot and move. Pretty straightforward. Um, so four shots, four shots, two shots. KYL, alternating, KYL, alternating, then the 90 yard, two shots. This stage is actually kind of hard. Um, well, today, right now, I'm having trouble seeing the KYLs. For some reason, I've been missing. Um, the first run around, I, I was able to hit nine. But now, as I keep shooting, I'm shooting it worse and worse. I was, I'm missing a bunch of them. So I'm having trouble seeing the KYLs right now. Uh, could help if I paint it. Um, it could be a problem for the other shooters. Not sure how to address that because they are so, they're so washed out if they're not painted against that dirt backdrop. So I'm gonna figure something out for that. Um, maybe I'll spray the dirt behind it a little bit with some orange paint just to give you some contrast. Definitely hard to see it right now, um, especially with this sunlight. Uh, I shot better the first time, only missed one, but every subsequent try I shot, it just missed, a, I dropped a bunch of shots. The last stage we're gonna run through is called Fly Old Glory from the rooftop. As I mentioned earlier, I couldn't get a rooftop down here from that side of the range. So we're just going to use this to simulate the height because I just want to make sure we can see all the targets at each height of this stage, uh, different positions or whatever, because the targets could be obscured. We don't know. Uh, so <clears throat> you got two banks of targets, 28 yards. We have a one and a half and a two inch, 94 yards. We have a three inch and a four inch. You're going to start rifle in hand. Maggie in action open, on start signal shooter will assume a prompt supported position on the left side of the rooftop and engage the one and a half and three H targets one shot each. So small target at 28, 
the large uh, small target at 94. Then you're gonna go to the rooftop and engage the two inch and four inch targets with three shots each. So you're gonna shoot the, the larger target each bank uh, with three shots each. So three shots and uh, 28 on two inches, then three shots and 94 yards on the four inch. And then you're gonna shoot it with the assume a prone supported position on the right side of the rooftop and engage the one and a half and three inch with one shot each. So small target, small target, uh, large target, large target, three shots each, and then uh, back to the right side, small target, small target. Should be pretty straightforward, but we'll just run through it. It's not a true, true uh, stage run, but we'll just kind of get an idea of uh, what the stage is gonna be like. Pretty straightforward stage. Um, we'll see how difficult the rooftop's gonna be uh, for people. It should be actually more stable than this, to be honest. It's just gonna be how people support the, the rear of the rifle, so. And I was burning my elbows on this black pad here, so gotta be careful with that. I'm already done shooting for today, but I did wanna put some rounds through these brand new billet mags that I got from Voodoo. Got the 10 rounders. Uh, just want to make sure they function okay. Uh, I actually haven't put them into the gun yet, so we'll see if they lock. It seems like they do, just barely. I had to, I had to put the adjustable mag catch in there, and I still have the, uh, the spacer back there, I believe. I should have the spacer back there. There's a little spacer that you put into this, this channel behind, above the... Uh, above the uh, mag catch so i do have that there it prevents it from it prevents the mag from rocking back and forth and uh it keeps that you know mag from tilting or whatever so it prevents the feed jams but we're going to run some rounds through these anodized mags or these billet anodized mags i would want more but they are kind of expensive right they're about a hundred bucks a piece give or take after tax and shipping they charge tax i think they do but uh Compared to, so you get like one mag versus three polymer mags. So take your, you know, take your pick. Do you want, do you want the polymer, you got more polymer mags or do you want the, uh, the Gucci looking billet mags? Um, personally, I mean, as cool as anodi the billet anodized mags are, I think you just, if you're just, you just got a Voodoo, you might as well just get the polymer mags because you need, you need more than one mag. You definitely need more than one mag. Um, especially if you're shooting NRL or any kind of matches, you want to have more mags available so you don't have to spend time loading. So for the cost of uh, one and billet mag, you can get three polymer mags, which should be sufficient for most people.
Gonna try to put some, yeah, the mag does not rock at all. So there should be no, no feeding issues here when it's pressed against a barricade, but yeah, it's got no issues. This one's got center X already loaded in it. I'll oh, just shoot that. Cool. Anyway, those are the the uh, billet anodized mags. They're about ninety four dollars per a ten rounder, I think. Eighty, I can't remember. But basically, for one of these, you can get three polymer mags. Should you get the billet mags? I don't know. If you want them, go for it. I got a couple because I just wanted them. Um, it's nice, though. I like the weight and feel of them. Um, but uh, other than that, eh, I know if I wanted quantity, I would go with polymer mags. I mean, the quality on the polymer mags are great. I, I, don't, I don't know if anyone's ruined one yet or broken one severely but i i don't know if it's justifiable to get the the billet mags to be honest for the price i mean they don't get me wrong they're nice mags the way they're finished and stuff but i would just go polymer if you especially if, you're, if you, you've got a voodoo and you need to get more mags like you're, you're got, starting to get some mags go polymer first and then once you decide that you want to get more after like your first four or five polymer mags then you go get, go ahead and get some billet mags just for fun or if you want the, because uh, they do have a 15 rounder, I think, 12 and a 15. So if you want the higher capacity mags, then you'll definitely want to get some billet mags. But if you're just looking at 10 rounders, maybe just stick with polymer. Save some money. That's my opinion. Definitely getting warm out right now. Forgot to pack some water in the truck, so I need to get something to drink on the way out of the range. There's a convenience store on the off ramp, so, or off freeway on ramp rather. So I'll get something to drink for the drive home. But yeah, today's shooting is okay. Um, I think I dropped uh, seven points total, one on the, the ladder stage and like six on the chair stage. So definitely need to work on that chair stage position. Um, I highly recommend people just at home, if they're gonna shoot the NRL 22 this month, in July, the course of fire, just sit on a chair and tr see if you can, how you're gonna position yourself to balance that rifle correctly. It's gonna be rough. Uh, <clears throat> that's kind of it as far as shooting. Uh, not much else to say. Last month's was a good match if you didn't see that range vlog. We had 14 shooters overall. We had a 15 cap. I know one person dropped out, but then one of the staff members uh, accounted for that other person. So we had 14, we had an empty slot. Um, I have 15. When I open up the match registrations for this month, We'll have 15 cap, but then not counting the staff. So there's going to be three staff. So there should be 15 non-staff shooters. Um, I count myself as staff, even though I pay for my fees. I pay my fees anyway, just to put it towards NRL 22, uh, the organization or whatever in the club. Uh, but we should have 15 shooters if you want to come out. Definitely um, register for that. We should have, I mean, there should be ample spots for the people that want to show up, uh, hopefully. We can get up to about 20 shooters, but definitely want to keep it at 15. Last month, I mean, we had it perfect. I mean, three squads, everyone ran smoothly. Everyone tried to maintain their distance as best we could. Um, everyone wore their masks. So it, was a, it was a good, good, uh, well-run match as far as safety in all aspects was concerned. Uh, some of the people, non-shooting non, non -shooting specific, some people asked about my Jeep, why I don't drive it to the range that much. Um, <clears throat> well, I usually just take the Tacoma to the range for match day because I have to uh, courier gear or uh, props from the Conus container and all that stuff so it's easier just to have my flatbed you know just to have a flatbed pickup but also today um i didn't drive today because i actually lifted my jeep if you weren't, weren't paying attention to my vlog or my rather my blog okfg.net my website i did lift my jeep recently um i went to a two and a half metal cloak um there's an article i wrote why you know just kind of the nuances with the lift install because i did it myself got it all aligned it's running pretty nice um, but I extended the brake lines because when you, if you keep the stock brake lines and you have a lift, it's a chance that you could stretch those brake lines out when you're at full flex. Um, so they're extended, but I don't have, um, the front ones need to be kind of 
sort of secured so they don't get in the way of anything during a turn. Um, I bought some, I bought a, an extended brake line mount type deal that will allow it to flex if the tire turns or the wheel turns, it'll kind of flex so it doesn't, it, rather than zip tying it to the shock and you, with the possibility of kind of stressing that brake line, I went with that other option. So I'm gonna install that probably soon. I didn't want to drive it to the range while I had those brake lines sort of loose. I drove it on the road. Driving it on the road is fine, um, but on the on like off road, I was weary of those brake lines sort of just getting caught in something. So didn't want to drive it to the range yet. So I'm probably gonna fix that today actually. Probably install those uh, brake line mounts so that I can secure those front brake lines. And I'm gonna get new wheels for it, I, tires. I wasn't going to do that. I was gonna ride the stock 32s for a while, but I got a quote from a local tire shop and then the owner emailed me and said, hey, um, did you get the quote? If you did, we'll knock off 100, you know, I just wanna let you know we'll knock off 150 if you get it before the third or by the third. So I said, you know what, let me just do that, right? So I, I went ahead and I walked in and just said, hey man, I'll take advantage of that $150 deal or whatever. So it came out to a good price. My only concern is one, my gears are 410s, so I'm running stock 410s. I'm not gonna re-gear yet because I've spent all that money on the lift and the now the tires and wheels. So I think it's 1600 or 1400 for the uh, re-gear. I'm gonna go to 488s probably on 35s. Um, so I'm gonna have to save up for that. Um, I mean, granted, I have the cash for it right now. It's just I don't like to deplete more cash than I had planned on spending. So I'll save up for a few months and then get the rear gearing. We'll see how much, how badly I hate 410 gears with 35 inch tires on the Jeep. Um, and then um, number two is the fenders. Like I put three inches of bump stop as Metal Cloak advised. I haven't tested to see if my tires will hit right now at full flex. So I need to test that now, to be honest. And then um, when I put the 35s with the stock fenders, I'm probably gonna have to put more bump stops on there. Um, it's gonna it's gonna suck. I mean, you can take them off. They're easy to put on and take off, but I'd rather not have to put them on. So with the fenders, I'm I'll probably I'll have to get new fenders as well. So with the new tires, we'll see what they look like when I put it full flex. I have to test it. And then the third thing is going to be uh, the rock slider. I have to trim my rock sliders. So with 35s, the stock rock sliders on the Rubicon extends out to the wheel well on the rear, and it could rub, right? My axles are centered. They like they did the, did the alignment with the adjustable track bars and the control arm, so everything's good. But there is a chance the 35s will hit that, will rub that uh, rock slider uh, on the rear. So I'm gonna have to uninstall the rock slider, which isn't too difficult, and then just kind of sawzall it or Dremel and cut it and then kind of just smooth it out and then uh, just have it flush with the wheel well so there's no contact there. I was gonna buy some new rock sliders, like aftermarkets, but I haven't found anything I really wanna get yet. I may decide to go frame mounted once. I do not want to do body mount. I do not want to take off the body bolts because there's so many horror stories about people snapping the body bolt and then you have to pay a ton of money to get that body bolt out there, out of the, uh, out of the thread because it's just so difficult to get that out. And it, it'll be a huge mess if you snap the body bolt. So um, I'm definitely gonna go frame mounted uh, if I go with the uh, uh, new rock, a new uh, aftermarket rock slider. Anyway, that's kind of it for the uh, babbling. I need to, throw this stuff in the uh, truck and then uh, go get some of the drink because I am definitely getting thirsty right now. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully you're going to have a great Independence Day. Um, this won't be published until probably tomorrow or the next day after. So by the time you see this, uh, July 4th is over. So hopefully you're seeing this in good health and nothing happened during July 4th and you had a safe July 4th. Anyway, I uh, just want to wish everyone a happy Independence Day. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next vlog.